All right, everyone. A newly published report in Apple Insider states Snow Leopard will be the first version of Mac OS X to fully support Sun's open source ZFS file system. Currently, Mac OS X Leopard only supports read only ZFS file access. However, it is anticipated that both Snow Leopard client and Snow Leopard server will enable read and write access to the ZFS file system. Today I'm going to give a brief high-level overview of what is ZFS. Most of my information is coming from both the Wikipedia article as well as a podcast published on pixelcore.tv from MacBreak Tech. I'm going to post a link to both of these websites and if you're interested to listening to the actual podcast, you can download this episode of MacBreak Tech and the conversation of ZFS picks up at around the 41 minute mark. One of the hallmarks of ZFS is that it's implemented as a 128-bit file system. This number is actually 18 billion billion times more data storage than what's currently available on a 64-bit file system. And 128 bits is so ridiculously massive that you couldn't fill a 128-bit storage pool without boiling the oceans. This comes from one of the project leaders who helps implement and create ZFS. Because ZFS is capable of handling so much information, a number of safeguards has been built into the file system to ensure the integrity of your data is never compromised. The first of these steps is the inclusion of a 256-bit checksum that is verified whenever a block of data is read off your hard drive. This ensures accurate reading and writing of data to your hard drive when working with a ZFS file system. ZFS implements what's known as a copy on write transaction model. This means active data is never overwritten. Instead, modification to documents are grouped together and written in separate pieces or areas of your hard drive. An example of this would be opening a Photoshop document doing some level adjustments, cropping, and perhaps doing a rotation. Each of these actions is written in separate areas of the hard drive, and pointers to the original document and the changes are written accordingly. An advantage of copy and write is that when ZFS writes new data, blocks containing the old data can be retained, allowing the snapshot version of the file system to be maintained. ZFS snapshots are created very quickly since all the data composing the snapshot is already stored. They are also space efficient, since any unchanged data is shared among the file system and its snapshots. ZFS is able to more efficiently pack data onto your hard drive by using variable block sizes. For example, if you were to go clubbing one night and get a girl's phone number, write it to a text file on your hard drive, the actual size of that file might be very small and in this instance I made it 47 bytes in size. However, after passing through HFS Plus, which is the underlying file system for Mac OS X today, that 47 byte file would actually balloon to 4 kilobytes when written to your hard disk. The reason for this is because HFS Plus is limited to working with fixed block sizes in order to keep track of where all the data is on your hard drive. Conversely, if you had a large high-definition video file, such as Asian Animal Lovers, a large 17 gigabyte fi uh, video file, for instance, would consume roughly 4 million blocks as well. And once again, it's because HFS Plus is currently restricted to working with fixed block sizes of 4 kilobytes each. Because ZFS is not limited to working with fixed block sizes, smaller files such as preference settings, text files, and log files would conceivably consume less hard drive space over time. In my previous example, a phone number would take up 4 kilobytes of hard drive space even though the actual file is much smaller than 4 kilobytes. ZFS's variable block sizes would mean that a smaller file could take up one-fourth the file size on your hard drive by using a one kilobyte block instead of four kilobytes which is the standard today. Conversely, when working with large high-definition video files, 
ZFS has the support to allow blocks to be up to 128 kilobytes in size. So for instance, a 17 gigabyte file would consume 4,456,448 blocks under HFS Plus. The same file using 128 kilobyte blocks would only consume 139,264 blocks, which is a reduction of 32 times fewer blocks compared to HFS Plus. This has another advantage in that file reads of large contiguous files on your hard drive could also be faster because there's going to be less seek time to find the individual pieces scattered a bit about your hard drive. So in terms of even overall throughput, ZFS will offer advantages compared to HFS Plus and this could prove to be very popular amongst video editors for example who frequently have to work with multiple gigabyte or even terabyte size files when working with high definition video content. Those are just some of the features that make ZFS such a kick-ass file system for Mac OS for the next 20 to 30 years. I'm glad to see Apple is introducing enterprise level data protection to consumers when Snow Leopard comes out next year. And that's just my brief overview of ZFS. Alright, that's about it. Peace.